I've got the food. Rembrandt and Rothko. Rembrandt and Rothko. Rothko and Rembrandt. Rothko and Rembrandt and Turner. Rothko and Rembrandt and Turner. Rothko and Rembrandt and Turner. Oh my. <laughs> the Chinese place is closing. Everything worthwhile ends. We're in the perpetual process now. Creation, maturation, cessation. There's another Chinese around the corner. <laughs> the eternal cycles grind on. Generations pass away. Hope turns arid. But there's another Chinese around the corner. <sighs> Not much for small talk. It's small. I went to the Modern last night, saw the Picasso show. And? I don't think he's so much concerned with generations passing away. Oh, don't kid yourself, kid. That man... Though now a charlatan, of course, signing menus for money like Dali, <laughs> when he's not making those ugly little pots also for money. That man, at his best, understood the workings of time. Where's the receipt? Oh, here. You know, it's tragic, really, to grow superfluous in your own lifetime. <laughs> we destroyed cubism, de Kooning and me, and Barnett Newman and Pollock and all the others. We stomped it to death. Nobody, nobody can paint a cubist picture today. You took pride in that? Stomping cubism to death? Yeah, the child must banish the father. Respect him, but kill him. And enjoy it? Doesn't matter. Just be audacious and do it. You know, courage in painting isn't facing the blank canvas. It's facing Manet. It's facing Velasquez. All we can do is move beyond what was there to what is here and hope to get some intimation of what will be here. What is past and passing and to come. That's Yeats, whom you haven't read. Come on, but Picasso... Yeah, Picasso, I thank for teaching me that movement is everything. Movement is life. The second we're born, we squall, we writhe, we squirm. To live is to move. Without movement, paintings are what? Dead? Yeah, precisely. Look. Look, look. look at the tension between the blocks of color. The dark and the light, the red, the black and the brown. They, they exist in a state of flux, of movement. They abut each other on the actual canvas, so too do they abut each other in your eye. They ebb and flow and shift, gently pulsating. The more you look at them, the more they move. They float in space. They breathe. Movement, communication, gesture, flux, interaction, letting them work. They're not dead because they're not static. They move through space if you let them. This movement takes time, so they're temporal. They require time. They demand it. They don't work without it. This is why it's so important to me to create a place. A place where the viewer can contemplate the paintings over time and, and let them move. They need the viewer. They're not like representational pictures, like traditional landscapes or portraits. No, tell me why. Because they change. They move. They pulse. Representational pictures are unchanging. They don't require the active participation of the viewer. Go to the Louvre in the middle of the night and the Mona Lisa will still be smiling. But do these paintings still pulse when they're alone? <sighs> That's why you keep the light so low. Is it? To help the illusion. Like a magician, like a play. To keep it mysterious. To let the pictures pulsate. You turn on bright lights and the stage effect is ruined. Suddenly it's nothing but a bare stage with a bunch of fake walls. Let me just... Mm. <laughs> what do you see? My eyes are adjusting. Just... White. What does white make you think of? Bones, skeletons, charnel house, anemia, cruelty. Really? It's like an operating theater now. How does white make you feel? Frightened? Why? Doesn't matter. No, no, why? It's like the snow. outside the room where my parents died. It was winter. I remember the snow outside the window. White. And the paintings in this light, they're flat, vulgar. This light hurts them. You see how it is with them? How vulnerable they are? People think I'm controlling. Controlling the light. Controlling the shape of the gallery, controlling the height of the pictures. It's not controlling, it's protecting. A picture lives by companionship, it dies by the same token. It's a risky act to send it out into the world.
You ever paint outdoors? You mean out in nature? Yeah. Nature doesn't work for me. The light's no good. <laughs> all those bugs. Ugh. No, I know, I know. Those plein air painters, oh, they'll sing to you endless paeans about the majesty of natural sunlight. Oh, get out there. Muck around in the grass, they tell you, like a cow. <laughs> no, when I was younger, I didn't know any better. So I'd haul my supplies out there and the wind would blow the paper. The easel would fall over. Ants would get in the paints. Uh... <laughs> but then I go to Rome for the first time. I go to the Santa Maria del Popolo to see Caravaggio's conversion of Saul, which turns out is tucked away in a dark corner of this dark church with no natural light. It's like a cave. But that painting glowed. With a sort of rapture, it glowed. Now consider, Caravaggio was commissioned to paint the picture for this specific place. He had no choice. He stands there and he looks around. It's like under the ocean it's so goddamn dark. How's he going to paint here? He turns to his creator. God, help me, unworthy sinner that I am. Tell me, O oh Lord on high, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> and then it comes to him. The divine spark. He illuminates that picture from within. He gives it inner luminosity. The painting lives like, like, like one of those bioluminescent fish from the bottom of the ocean, radiating its own effulgence. You understand me? Garavaggio was... Bring me the second bucket. Are you really going to paint? So what the hell do you think I have been doing? Here. Huh. I need something. Give me, give me black number four and the first maroon. Mm. Yeah, pinch of black. Yeah, just that amount again. Mm. Twice as much maroon. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, what does it need? Red? I wasn't talking to you. <sighs> Don't you ever do that again! By what right do you speak? By what right do you express an opinion on my work? Who the fuck are you? What have you done? What have you seen? Where have you earned the right to exist here with me? And these things you don't even understand. Red? Oh, you want to paint the goddamn thing? Go ahead. Here's red. And red. And red. And red. I don't even know what that means. What does red mean to me? Oh, you mean scarlet? Huh? You mean crimson? Do you mean plum? Mulberry? Magenta? Burgundy? Salmon? Carmen? Carnelian? Coral? Anything but red! What is red? I meant sunrise. Sunrise. I meant the red at sunrise. The feeling of it. Well, the feeling of it. Well, what does that mean, the feeling of it? I didn't mean red paint only. I meant the emotion of red at sunrise. Sunrise isn't red. Yes, it is. I'm telling you, it's not. Sunrise is red and red is sunrise. Red is heartbeat. Red is passion. Red wine. Red roses. Red lipstick. Beets. Tulips, peppers. Arterial blood. That too. Rust on the bike on the lawn. And apples. And tomatoes. Dresden firestorm at night. The sun in Rousseau. The flag in Delacroix. The robe in El Greco. A rabbit's nose. An albino's eyes. A parakeet. Florentine marble. Atomic flash. Nick yourself shaving. Blood in the Barbasol. The ruby slippers. Technicolor. That phone to the Kremlin on the president's desk. Russian flag. Nazi flag. Chinese flag. The Simmons. Pomegranates, red light district, red tape, rouge, lava, lobsters, scorpions, stop sign, sports car, a blush, viscera, flame, dead phobic, traffic lights, tish and hair, slash your wrist, blood in the sink, Santa Claus, Satan. <laughs> so? Red? Exactly. We got any more cigarettes? <sighs> Here. Oh, more than anything, you know what? What? Matisse's painting. The red studio. It's a picture of his own studio. The walls are a brilliant red. The floor, the furniture, it's all red, red. It's like that color had radiated out of him and swallowed everything up. When the modern first put that picture up, I would spend hours looking at it. Day after day, I would go. 
You could argue that everything I do today, you can trace the bloodlines back to that painting and those hours I spent standing there, letting that picture work, allowing it to move. The more I looked at it, the more it pulsated around me. I was totally saturated. It swallowed me. Such planes of red he made. Such energetic blocks of color. Such emotion. Yeah, that was a long time ago. It's still there. I can't look at it now. Why? It's too depressing. How can all that red be depressing? I don't see the red anymore. Even in that painting, that total and profound immersion in red, it's there. The mantle above a dresser, just over the center line, set off by yellow of all goddamn things. He wanted it inescapable. What? Black. The color black? The thing black. There's only one thing in life I fear, my friend. One day the black will swallow the red.